Hello everyone, Pete here, and dual booting Steam OS using Bazite and also using Windows is mind blowing. We really do get the best of both worlds. With Steam OS, our Switch games are much smoother, our game library is much more insanely customizable and looks so much better. And also, most importantly, we get true sleep and resume functionality. And we get the very best of Windows too, such as being able to play games easily from third party launches, the ability to play all of our anti cheat games, and also being able to download and play Game Pass games natively. Switching between them both is so easy too, as in Steam OS, we simply head into settings, then click on reboot into Windows, and in Windows, we just hit simply restart to get straight back into Steam OS. And the beauty of this is that we don't need to wipe our current Windows setup, we can keep it completely as it is. This is a fully up to date guide as there is a significant change from our previous one in that this new method creates what are known as separate EFI partitions that will stop Windows updates potentially completely destroying our ability to launch into Bazite and so wipe in all of our data I like what sadly happened to me. So here are the 15 easy steps on how to do this on the Ally and Ally X. And of course, this works for all Windows based PC gaming handhelds like the Legion Go and MSI Claw 2. So there are five essential things that we need to do this and one optional thing. The first essential thing is at least 64 gigabytes of free SSD space. And don't forget to back up any essential files too beforehand too, just in case. But as I say, this will not wipe our current Windows setup, thankfully. The second essential thing is a USB flash drive that's at least a 3.0 type. It has at least 16 gigabytes of storage and really importantly, all data will be completely wiped on this. So make sure there's no crucial files that you need on it. The third essential thing is any kind of USB hub as obviously our flash drive, which is USB A type, won't fit into our USB C port on our Ally. The fourth essential thing is a wired keyboard. I'm using an Apple one here, but literally any type of wired keyboard will do. And the fifth is some spare time, as it will take roughly 90 minutes to about two hours to do this. But the great thing is that once we're set up with this using this new method, we'll never have to do it again. And the optional item is a wired mouse that will make our life much, much easier doing this. And I highly recommend this. So for step one, let's open our favorite web browser, which in my case is Brave. Search for Bazite. The number one item is bazite.gg, so click on this. And I'll also leave a direct link to this below in the description. Now click on the top right button that says Download Bazite. Click on the What Hardware Are You Using drop down and select your device. So like Legion Go or MSI Claw, of course I'm using an Ally X, so I'll click this. Next in the desktop environment drop down, select the KDE option, as we do want it to be just like Steam OS. Click on the new Download Bazite Deck button, save it anywhere you like, so for me I'm just going to select the desktop, and it's 8.5 gigabytes, so it took me on my 1 gigabits per second internet speed only about 10 minutes. Next for step two, we need to flash the Bazite image onto our USB. And the official Steam Bazite instructions that I'm following right now suggest either Fedora Media Writer, Rufus, or Etcher. So with our Bazite image downloaded that we can see right here ready to go, let's open up our browser. I really like Etcher, so let's Google search this. Click on the first link, and the web address is etcher.bellina.io, and I'll leave a direct link below. I used this in last year's Bazite guide and really love how clean it is. Plus the Bazite guide recommends this too, so click the green download etcher button, click on the first Windows installer blue download link here, save it anywhere. So for me, again, I'm gonna pick the desktop and it's a really small file, so literally it only takes a few seconds. So now etcher is downloaded. For step three, let's install etcher by minimizing our browser, clicking on our newly downloaded setup file, and for me, it popped up straight away as I may have already had it installed. For step four, let's now put Bazite onto our USB. So let's grab our USB flash drive. Remember that any data on this will be wiped during this process. Plug it into our USB hub. Click on the blue flash from file and select our Bazite image, which for me is on the desktop. In the middle, blue select target button. Click this and our USB should be the only one available. So click on this, then click the blue select button. And now on the right blue flash button, click on this to start the process. Click yes on this Windows command processor pop-up. And this does take quite a while, which for me was about 25 minutes, plus a few minutes after which automatically validates the file. 
eight weeks later. For step five, we now need to disable fast startup and also hibernate, which can both cause problems when we're dual booting. So let's hit the start button. In the search at the top, type control, then click on the first match, which is the control panel. Go down and click on the hardware and sound green writing. Then under power options, click on the change what the power buttons do. Now click on this blue writing that says change settings that are currently unavailable. And make sure that this turn on fast startup up is disabled. And also this hibernate option is also unticked, which they were both for me actually already. And then we can exit out. Next for step six, let's now create our Bazite partition on our SSD drive. So click the start button in the search menu, type disk, click on this create and format hard disk partitions. And here we're now in our disk management. We can see here that this is our current C drive, which also appears here on the upper part of the screen. And I have this 1952 gigabytes here, which is my current Bazite partition that I cannot access, which also appears here near the top too. I did cover this in my recent problem with Bazite guide vid. And the issue was a recent Windows update that completely wiped out the option to boot into Bazite. You awesome viewers offer great suggestions in how to fix this, including Breakwin96. And I did work on a vid on how to fix this, but after many hours of doing something called manually adding an EFI entry, it was just too complex. I just decided to do this fully updated Bazite tutorial instead. So for me, I'm going to select on my Bazite partition that I now can't access clicking it right here, then press the delete button. And this is painful as all of my old Bazite data, including all of my save files will be gone. Yeah, thanks Microsoft for your stupid Windows updates. I've clicked, yes, oh man, that was painful. And I'm gonna install my new Bazite here. If you've already installed Dual Boot Bazite and are now installing this new process like me so that Windows updates won't now potentially mess up your Bazite partition, then obviously make sure that all of your key Bazite files like ROMs and save files are fully backed up before you delete this like I've just done. And if you haven't installed Bazite previously, then right click on the C drive, click this shrink volume option. It takes a moment as this querying shrink space message pops up. Then just type in the amount of space to shrink in megabytes here. Now we need to divide this pretty much evenly, 50% Windows and 50% Bazite. As our great viewer Rockstar, my new viewers are the absolute best. Ran into real issues if we do say a quarter for Bazite and three quarters for Windows. So if you have a one terabyte SSD, it will be about half a gig. So five zero 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 megabytes for each. A two terabyte SSD may be about one terabyte each. So therefore one zero 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 megabytes for each or a four terabyte SSD just like mine. It may be about two terabytes for each. So two zero 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 megabytes for each. When you've entered your amount, click on the shrink button, then hit the power button, then restart. And I'll hold down the volume down button at all times now for us to enter into the BIOS section of our ally or other handle that we're doing this on. We're now in our BIOS. So for step seven, we now need to turn off secure boot, which again can cause significant issues when dual booting. It may be different for your handheld, but for the ally, we press the Y button to enter advanced mode. Press the RB button to head into the security tab. Scroll down to secure boot at the bottom and then press A. Head to secure boot control and make sure that this is set to disabled. Press the RB button again to head into the save and exit tab. Click on save changes and exit. Then click OK. We'll get this choose an operating system message so just leave it. Windows will load up. Hit the power button and restart again. And hold the down volume button again to enter into our BIOS yet again. Now with secure boot fully disabled. And we're now getting on to the good stuff. As for step eight, let's now install Bazite. Now press the command center button to enter boot menu. Scroll down to USB flash drive with Bazite on and click on this. We have three options here, which are install Bazite, test this medium and install or troubleshooting. But we know that we're all good to go in this. We can simply hit install Bazite. This will take just a few moments as a load of gobbledygook filled with some errors completely fills our screen. But don't worry about this, this is completely normal. And now we're into the welcome to Bazite intro screen. Here we just select our language, which for me is in English UK, then hit continue. 
Next under system, click this installation destination option and we can see our partition is already ticked and selected. We can see here that automatic is already selected and we need to change this. Otherwise Windows updates will likely overwrite the shared EFI, which as I say is what happened to me and really messed stuff up. So let's select the advanced custom option. Again, let me repeat this. Do not click automatic on this section. Click on the advanced custom to save us many headaches down the line and then click done. Step nine is such a crucial step. I can't emphasize this enough. And that is that we now need to create six adjustments right here so that Windows doesn't mess this up. And it is really super easy, so don't freak out here. For the first adjustment, click free space. Then the plus icon. In the file system, change this from ext4 to efi system partition. In mount point, type in forward slash boot forward slash efi. Change the GIB to MIB, double click the number in size and type in 300, then click OK. For adjustment two, click free space again, then the plus again, leave the file system as ext4, in the mount point type forward slash boot, leave GIB as it is, and I'll double click the size numbers and type in 1.0 like this and then click OK. For adjustment three again, click free space, then again, click the plus, change the file system from ext4 to btrfs. No other changes are needed here, so just click OK. For adjustment four, we can now see that a new folder called btrfs appears on the top left that we have just created. So let's click on this, click on the plus. In the mount points, we simply need to type forward slash, then click OK. For adjustment five, click on the plus. In the mount point, simply type in forward slash VAR, then hit OK. And for the sixth and final adjustment, click the plus. In the mount point, type in forward slash VAR, forward slash home, then click OK. So as we've now finished all six adjustments needed, let's now hit done on the top left. It gives us a summary of all of the changes that we've done, which is all fine. So let's click accept changes and we're back to this screen. For step 10, let's finish off our Bazite installation by clicking on network and host name. Click on select network on the bottom right. Select your Wi-Fi and enter your password to join your Wi-Fi network here. Then click done on the top left. And finally, let's create a Bazite profile by clicking user creation. In full name and also username type what you want to be known as so for me it's just pete then enter a memorable password here and do not lose this perhaps write it down in fact as we will need to use this later on when we're installing items so now we've breezed past through the slightly tricky bits let's just hit begin installation on the bottom right it will take about 10 minutes to set everything up so relax and grab a nice cool beverage perhaps and as the famous philosopher used to say hell yeah for step 11 is finishing off post Bazite setup. So once we get this completed message, let's hit reboot system on the bottom right. On this blue screen, hit return to select continue boot. And that's it. It will just take a few moments to launch. Now select our language, which for me is English. Then select our time zone, which for me is here in the UK. Select our Wi-Fi network. Then simply sign into Steam right here. We have our welcome to Steam mini tutorial right here. And we now have our glorious console like Steam OS right here. That will be very familiar to any of us who have ever owned a Steam Deck before. Step 12 is to check a few things out here in Bazite Gaming Mode. Clicking on our command center button acts as our Steam button and brings up the menu. There's two things here to check out. Let's head to settings, then system, and click on check for updates to make sure that we're on the very latest version. And for two, let's scroll all the way down to storage and we can check out here our free space on this Bazite partition that we've created. So for those of us like me rocking a four terabyte SSD, we've got almost two terabytes free, which is so, so nice. Then on our ally, we can hit our army crate button, which brings up the right quick settings menu, hit the power icon, then advanced view. Let's scroll down and enable VRR because our ally supports this 
and enabling TDP limit means that we can set less or more power, which is a great battery saving tool. I'm going to turn this off for now. Then let's start downloading some games. For 13, let's take a look at the Bazite's desktop menu. So we can access this at any time by pressing the command center button, then power, then switch to desktop. With our ally not having touchpads, it may be worth using a mouse and keyboard here, but we really don't have to. We can return to gaming mode at any time by pressing this. And our Bazite start menu gives us access to many features like system settings, for example. And it's here in desktop mode that we can really unlock the potential of Bazite. I've done many guides and I'll leave a playlist link below, but the first two that I really do recommend are Decky Loader, which installs amazing plugins, and of course, Emidec to play all of our favorite retro games. To remote play our PS5, I've done a guide using an amazing app called Chiaki, and also an even better app called PX Play. And to do Xbox Remote Play and also Xbox Cloud Streaming, there is an amazing app called Greenlight and so, so much more. At 14, let's check out Bazite's menu called Handheld Daemon. So click on Return to Bazite's Gaming Mode as we'll spend like 90% of our time there playing games. And in here at any time, we can press our Army Crate button twice to enter Handheld Daemon. And here we can change the TDP power, change the RGB thumbsticks lighting, and I'm gonna set it to Rainbow, which is my favorite. Then pressing the Y button brings us to the full settings menu. So stuff like I'm going to increase the RGB thumbsticks to high because I'm really tacky and really love these. I've covered my top 10 Bazite tips in this vid and I'll leave a link below so definitely check that out. And for 15 let's recap how to dual boot. So here in handheld daemon go to general then simply reboot into windows and after a moment then here we are ready to enjoy all the benefits of windows like our native game pass games and also anti-cheat games. Then at any time in Windows, we just simply hit the power button, then restart, and boom, we're straight back into Bazite gaming mode. And we can change our boot preferences by restarting and holding down volume button to enter into BIOS. And it's here in our boot priority, and currently Fedora, which is Bazite, takes priority to boot into. We can drag Windows to take priority if we want to spend most of our time in Windows. I'm going to change it back to Fedora as the priority as I'm now going to spend a lot of time within Bazite. So we just hit the top left button, press OK to save our changes and we're back into Bazite. Congratulations, you're now fully up to date and running with Dual Boots Bazite. And if this guide helped you then do let us know in the comments below. And also tell us all what feature of Dual Boots Bazite that you love the most. And as a thank you for watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. We can't keep getting mad at people for sucking the life out of us if we keep giving them the straw. Oh my goodness, this is so true. There are so many people around us who are so toxic and negative and they can really suck all of the life out of us. But let us not forget that we have the power to choose if we're gonna allow them to do that or not. So stay encouraged today, guys. And as an extra bonus treat for staying right to the end, here's our gorgeous rescue cat and her name is Pancake. If you enjoyed today's video then check out my Bazite top 10 tips vid on the top right or my Steam OS tutorials playlist on the bottom right to install great apps like Decky Loader and Emidec onto our fresh new Bazite. As always be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.